today in this video I'm gonna show you my latest finished object my grandpa style oversized cozy cardigan of my dreams the champagne cardigan Hello guys, my name is Mary Lisa and this is the girl Miss Yarn. In this channel I share a little bit of everything that I love and I'm get into crafty wise. Um, I share a lot about uh, knitting, a little sewing, cooking, um, home stuff even and sometimes a lot of my love of thrifting. So I share a little bit of everything. So welcome to my channel. I'm really glad you're here. So let's get to today's episode. <laughs> I have finished a couple of things lately. I'm going to show you guys in the next weeks. But I wanted to take a moment to talk about this epic finished object, the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Needs. You guys know I moved to Texas and here, you know, it qu gets quite cold in the winter, but it's really hot, like hot, like 100 degrees in the summer. On the flip side, if you go into anywhere, restaurant, movie theater, whatever, they blast that air conditioner like there's no tomorrow and you're freezing or I am freezing in like two nanoseconds so I needed something that I could like put on and take off you know if needed and you guys know I have talked to about this so many times I love cardigans I have tried so many times to make cardigans I have made some bulky ones I have made some house cute fluffy ones I made the car bath cardigan and we're not talk about that because that's a sensitive um, like a sensitive topic because I felt that that one um but I needed something in my wardrobe that I could like put on and take uh, like off and at the same time will be girly and cute but classic so I thought what's best than a uh, oversized grandpa style cardigan I think this cardigan can be styled so many ways. You can use it with jeans, you can use it with dresses, with shorts. It has like a little balloony on the back. I just like bring it back a little bit. I plan on making uh, little flowers, bro brooches, and then put it in here. And even like, you know, glitzy, antique, thrifted bro brooches will look amazing on the lapel of it. Um, I also want to make like a crochet doily uh, flower to put it in there just to give it like a little bit more charm um, but everything to be you know you can add or take it away um, or even like a cute little bow that will be amazing. If you have never knitted anything from uh, Petite Knits, her patterns are really, really good, easy to follow, very simple. You don't have a lot of like the cutesy st stuff and like too much diagrams and whatever. It's really straightforward and really good pattern. So this pattern goes up to a size 5XL and I made a size medium. It was uh, written for a worsted weight yarn and when I look into my yarn, I had this yarn that my friend Christina, when I visit her um, after Rhinebeck, um, she gifted me this DK Cozy in the Chelsea Coop color and she gifted me four for a pattern. I think it was like the wave of change or change wave Sorry, I don't know the name, I'll put it here. Um, she gifted me four and then two of this uh, mohair in the rose gold. Um, so, of course, DK and um, <clears throat> this lace will make worth it. So, which is like great. After, after um, starting it, I noticed that I didn't have enough because the pattern asked for 600 grams and I had. 400 here so i was definitely needing more um after seeing the fabric knitted um there was not a lot of like um the stitch definition because of the texture of the yarn so i wanted a little bit more definition for the button band so i decided on buying a worsted weight yarn in a gold color so i went into the hobby uh, website and I found this Metallica which is an acrylic in the color rose pearl no um, I think it's number three and I bought six um, I love that it has that little texture of having um, like the mohair textures that when you mix this too so I just like I, I thought you know it was gonna be a, a nice contrast at the same time I'm gonna have a little bit of that fussiness we will talk about that later. Um, and I bought six skeins. This was quite cheap. I think I paid like $4 per skein. And I have 
three full skeins. So I use 150 grams for the button man um, all around. Besides that, I use the recommended needles, uh, USI 7 for the body. She suggests 2.5 for the placket. And you need only five buttons or four buttons four buttons for that and I think they're like an inch and I got this one at a secondhand shop in Seattle so those are all the basics I'm going to leave all the links if I can find them on the description box and let's take a break and I will talk about all about the process <laughs> Profesh. The name Cardigan comes from, you guessed it, the Earl of Cardigan, a very fashionable guy who used this kind of style in the 1800s. The legend says that the seventh Earl of Cardigan, a British Army Major General, very famous for a lot of different battles, invented the cardigan after the tails of his coat got accidentally burned by a fireplace. So no tails, <laughs> no burnt. Um, coat <laughs> however it was made famous by coco chanel not my favorite person in history but she was going you guys know through menswear and kind of like adding a little bit more feminine details um and then she was into this nautical um you know moment so she had this sweater it was a little bit more constrict constrictive i cannot talk and then she opened it up and finished the edges with ribbon I mean, after hearing that, of course, I needed a contrasting yarn. Um, so she made it super, super famous. Um, and it was later on in the 50s and the 90s and the 80s. You know, this is being timeless. It's a timeless item. It's a sweater, but you can detach it and you will not mess up your hair. So that's the history. If you don't like pearling, definitely this is not the cardigan for you. I'm going to tell you why. Because... It's like an old-fashioned way of doing a cardigan, of knitting on the right side, rolling on the row, no sticky, no craziness, um, just straightforward. I don't mind purling at all. It doesn't bother my hands. My stitch um, uh, consist is very consistent on, on both. And besides, with this yarn, there's no way you can see if there's any errors because um, of the texture that it actually have when you knit it um, you have a little bit of short rows on the back and then you go into the increases straightforward um, and then um, you separate for the sleeves and um, I think she suggests I think it was like 22 inches for my size uh, but I cut it out at 20 I wanted it to be a little bit longer kind of like a little bit more frumpy but I didn't have enough yarn because I had, like I said, 400 grams and I needed 600. So I went ahead and started working with my um, contrasty yarn, the acrylic yarn. Um, you don't change needles for the rib. You go ahead and keep them the USI 7 and then you do a 4 inch rib and when I started knitting, I the only thing that I was a little bumped out is you cannot see. I thought it was going to be a little bit more me metallic, like more shiny, but it looked quite beige, um, kind of like a beigey rose. It's pretty. I love it. I mean, nothing else to say. You do that, and then you go into an Italian bind off, and oh my God, seriously, like I almost lost it. There are so many mistakes you will not see. <laughs> Big ass, I mean, <laughs> it was something. It was really ridiculous um i should have and it was me done a little bit longer if i had more yarn and then a little bit longer of a rib as well like i mean just it looks so good it was so good um so so far the body it was i was going i was going strong then i weighted the yarn i divided it in two i think i had it like 160 and then i decided to follow the instructions so that's exactly what i did i followed to the decreases and all that and i was okay i have enough i have enough um i wanted it to add a little bit more length and i will have add like two more inches um and then for sure 
if I need this again, which I will never do, I will change uh, the needles because you don't change needles for the rip on the sleeves. You keep the USI 7. I will go down one or two sizes for the rip and definitely I will take some stitches out like to make it not too tight, but it's quite like there's I cannot bring it up or on anything. It's just like stay there. So yeah, I will do that if I do this again, which is not gonna happen. I'm gonna tell you why quite like in two seconds um the same thing four inches um i love the contrast by now i was so excited um and then the same thing with the italian bite off and by now i knew how to do a bite off i think i have done some so much lately that i i think it's my favorite right now just just saying just saying just saying then we go to the plank I was like, I was vibing with this accordion. I was loving it. I was like, ooh, yeah, whatever. I have never, ever, I think I have, but I didn't, I have amnesia of the fact that um, the placket was double knit stitch. Okay. Um, no. <laughs> I will not change it to another thing. It looks amazing. Did I enjoy the process? Hell no. Okay, it was awful. Okay, with a little pause there. Number one, she asked that you now, you're switching your needles to a US 2.5 or three millimeters, if I'm not mistaken, needles. That is tiny. We're working with uh, worsted yarn. Um, then you pick up, you know, all your stitches all the way around and you start with your double knit. Really straightforward. I started it and I didn't pick enough stitches and it was quite, it was kind of like looking weird. I was just like, this is too tight. Um, I feel like it was like scrunching it out. It was just like, um, I don't know. It was just looking weird. I just thought, number one, I pick, didn't pick enough stitches and then um yeah <laughs> and the needles were so thin so i went ahead and ripped it up i had like a couple of brows going um no i had like a couple inches so i ripped it completely up i started again i did a new size four needles and i picked a lot of stitches i thought i picked too many but then I think it lays so nicely. I don't have any kind of uh, bulging or anything anywhere. So I think I did enough. She's going to do this. Do a lot. Because she doesn't give you the number. Okay. Just saying. So I started with, um, and I have a reel, about how long it took me. It took me six hours to go up to here. Okay. It was No, I think it was up to here. It was not even up there. Um, so the buttonholes really easy to follow she has um uh if you go to her website to petitneeds.com she has a video that is in um you know it's not in english but you can if you're visual like me you will have no problem uh really easy to make those buttonholes i have no problems i did um made less stitches that she suggested so she she suggested 10 uh, rows and i did eight because I had um, I, I I measure it and when I finished the buttons were too small so <laughs> I had to go and get bigger buttons but it looks amazing if I open this up let me open this up um, it looks kind of finished so it just it looks amazing if you ask me it looks so beautiful it looks amazing and um, I will not change this stitch it was boring it was a lot and um i think after i got through here i i was going you know i was i i got a rhythm but it took me a while to get into that rhythm it was a lot um so that uh, was the process if i'm going to go ahead and <laughs> um just do the finishing touches i use this vintage buttons i love that it has metal on the back um, I got five for one dollar in Seattle. Um, they are quite white. Um, if I was me, 
I thought about getting like gold ones or, or anything, you know, like a little bit more shiny, uh, more, I don't know, more stylish. But I think because you have all this color going on, you, I didn't need anything extra. I think I needed to simplify it a little bit and just let the yarn, which is amazingly dyed and amazing. This is just so well. I, I love it. Okay, like just say, I cannot say anything else. I love the colors, the speckles, all that yarn is the show here like why do I want to keep on adding and taking away from the main event which is the yarn um, I think the complimentary yarn uh, it's not gold but I love it it just looks quite you know subtle and it looks quite elegant the buttons uh, I did use a button thread for them and I <laughs> <laughs> probably have seen show you this um i went ahead and um i marked them with uh an erasable marker and then i added um you know the, the buttons to it and because it's double knit i don't have anything on the back so i can open it up and you will not see any knots or anything so i conceal it in there i find that it's warm it's fussy it's elegant it's classic it's just so beautiful and i am quite excited that it's in my wardrobe and after if I'm going to remind you guys what I did with my first cardigan, I have not blocked this thing. I'm so afraid I'm going to mess it up. So that's it. For the finishing touches, I added my favorite tag. <laughs> and you guys have seen this before. I made this, uh, you know, I made it because one day I said it and my daughter was like, that's not the way you said it. And I'm like, will you expect something different? definitely not so i got those uh tags made if you have never gotten a tag made please do they're so much fun you will definitely put your stamp with your knitting and you know how you pick everything but also it's like a, like a nice finishing touch and um when i got those done they posted in their social media because they were so fun and weird um i got so or this the tags got so many likes at the same time a lot of comments and a lot of like hate comments like you're not supposed to say that and i'm like i mean <laughs> will you expect something else from me no you will not then so that's it Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon. I have a couple things that I have finished. Um, I am going to go ahead and have lunch. And I am working on a friend-to-friend -friend shrug that I am embroidering. I'm really excited. I'll show you guys that one next week. So thank you so much for being here. I love you and i see you soon. Bye. <laughs>